Hello, this is Dr. Ali Mugabel. Uh, now we cover noise. Specifically, we'd like to go over shot and thermal noise, white noise. We'll look at low-pass filtered noise, whether using low, uh, ideal low-pass filter or using an RC low-pass filter. Then we'll look at the noise equivalent bandwidth. So noise, what is noise? Uh, some unwanted wave that disturb the transmission and processing of signals in communication. Of course, this is from noise perspective, from communication perspective. So noise is unwanted, unpredicted. Two things, unwanted, unpredicted. Some unwanted wave that disturb the transmission and processing of signals in communication. In communication system, there are many potential sources of noise. Of course, when I say unwanted, unpredictable, that's from the user or um, the guy who use, who's using the communication systems. For a communication engineer, we say thanks Allah for noise. If there is no noise, there is no job. So although things that look from one side bad, they have some reason for their existence. Now, uh, we can look at the potential sources of noise. First is external. It's not from the same system, like atmospheric noise, man-made noise. Or it could be internal due to the spontaneous fluctuations of current and voltage in electric circuits. Then the most common example of spontaneous fluctuations in electrical circuits are shot noise and thermal noise. So we, we have external sources and internal. In the internal, we have shot noise and we have thermal noise. And we'll give some idea about them in a second. So shot noise, this type of noise happens in electric devices where we have diode transistors, we have switching, and that occurs because of discrete nature of the current flow in the devices. Something switch on, switch off, and this there is some transition, unexpected uh, outcome. We also have the thermal noise, which happens due to random motion of electrons in the conductor. Thermal noise affects all communication receivers, and you cannot have a system with zero thermal noise, zero temperature and no uh, no noise added. Uh, one of the important models for, for noise is to assume that this noise is white. Uh, we have white noise. Noise is usually described by its power spectral density. So when I say that it's white, you know the white color is made of all other colors. So the white contains all colors and colors are distinguished by frequency. So when you say white noise, it means it covers the entire spectrum. It's constant over all frequencies. So white noise has the following power spectral density. And a power spectral density is one way of describing uh, the noise uh, random randomness. So we mentioned that the most acceptable widely used PSD, power spectral density of noise, is the flat over all frequencies, the white noise. Assuming that we have white noise, okay, is overdoing it because, you know, the amount of power here, if you integrate, give you infinity. And there is no such a thing like infinite power in physical systems. So the assumptions may sound ideal. However, the, this power spectral density being flat over wide bandwidth is reasonable as most of our systems cover uh, limited band. So for us, it looks constant white. Outside our system, we don't care much. So we uh, express the white noise as N naught over two. And the unit for N naught is watts per hertz. So if you give me the bandwidth, I multiply the bandwidth by N naught over two, and I will get how many watts are there. So this is power spectral density. Given the one bandwidth, we can get the power. The reason for dividing by two is we are considering the positive and neg negative frequency. And, and you know, if we have a physical system, then the bandwidth will be defined for the positive part. So to cover the two areas, we have N naught over two. The units for the power spectral density of the white noise is N naught over two. Uh, Looking at the physics behind that, if you want to know for a given system what's in naught, we can also represent this as K times TE, where TE is the equivalent noise temperature of the receiver in degree Kelvin. So the higher the temperature, the higher the noise. And K is the Poltzmann constant, and it's given by the following quantity. 
What about white noise? We have just look at the PSD. We have another way of uh, representing the frequency domain into time domain using the autocorrelation function, which is the M, which is the inverse Fourier transform of a constant. You get the delta, and it's scaled by a network. Term. So we have for white noise, we have the following uh, correlation. So it means that all samples are uncorrelated. Any two samples of white noise, no matter how closely together they are, they are uncorrelated. If you shift anything more than zero, you get zero correlation. We have zero here and zero here. Of course, if you compare the signal with itself, you get the noise power, which is in naught over two. If white noise is also Gaussian, because this this what you see here is just the relation between sample to another. Then if you know that the distribution is Gaussian, then of course the two samples are statistically independent. We mentioned this when we talked about Gaussian random variables. If they are uncorrelated, they become automatically uh, independent. That's a property of Gaussian. So you can think of white noise or white Gaussian noise as the highest degrees of randomness. There is no correlation. If you get a value now, the next value could be anything. Now let's take this white noise and make it more realistic. So we have now the title says ideal low pass filtered Gaussian white noise. So taking this white noise through an ideal low pass filter and we check what the output is. We'll say that the noise at the input have a mean of zero and the PSD as n naught over two. Since the low pass filter is ideal, its bandwidth is going to be one and we'll assume that its amplitude is going to be one, normalized. So there is no gain through the filter. We'll call here the input W and we call, we call the output after the filter as N0, N, N of T. Here is how the shape of the, of, of the filter looks look like, uh, or sorry, uh, the output. But if we take it through stages, we'll have the PSD of the noise of the filter output. It's going to be N0 over 2. That's the constant times, remember that we have a constant times uh, 1 squared and we get only uh, that uh, shape so the auto correlation now the way we got this let me just try to uh, explain it here we have the input to be constant all the way going through this filter sorry going through this filter so here h equal to one remember that the output power spectral density equal to the input power spectral density times h squared so because this is one it remains the same here we have not over two times 1 squared or 0 times 1 or 0 so what we get at the output is n naught over 2 between the two bandwidths and we have uh, the following shape, uh, shape at the output so the auto correlation function if you do the inverse Fourier transform for this you know the trick to give you a sink so you get n naught times b of sink so sketching this shape we get the following remember that the peak here equal to the area here so we have 2b times n naught over 2 you get a naught B. And we can get the exact shape through just a full inverse free transform problem. Uh, what's important here is that we see that the bandwidth noise is now correlated. Filtering the noise result in collision. Not only that, those samples are uncorrelated at those exact samples. If you take samples spaced by the following, you'll get the values of the noise to be independent uncorrelated and independent because they are gaussian otherwise there is some correlation and also the the mean at the output because the mean of the input is zero the mean of the output would also be zero so uh, the variance now is given by the expected value of n naught over two uh, n naught squared minus the mean squared that's the definition of noise uh, of variance but we know that this is zero at the output so what remains is the expected value of in, in, which is the energy or power which comes in naught times b so although we started with infinite power non-realistic noise white noise the filtered noise is having a power of in naught times b which is given by here or by the area under the psd this is important type of noise we need to focus on now let's go into the RC filtered low bus noise. We have a filtered noise now with a practical circuit. So to find out that this white Gaussian noise, what is going through, 
we'll start with a white Gaussian noise with zero mean and power spectral density, of course, constant in network two, applied to the, the slow bus filter. You know, this is a voltage divide that we can use the uh, omega domain to, to transfer. So we can find that the transfer function, the voltage here divided by the sum of the voltages with some arrangement, you get one over one plus J two by FRC. Now, the filtered noise output, as we know, would be uh, you multiply by the square of this, and uh, you get the following notation. So we get n not over 2. Uh, the rate is the input, and what remains here is uh, h. So we can get, uh, by uh, inverse Fourier transform, I can sketch the signal, but I can also find the time domain by using the inverse Fourier transform, and I got the following expression. To look at these two in the diagram, so you can see that this is a sketch of the power spectral density. And here is also a sketch of the autocorrelation function. You can see that all samples are absolutely correlated. But as we go up beyond certain value, we can say that this is almost zero and we cross. So usually what they do, they say for sampled, if noise at the output of the RC filter is sampled at a rate less than the following, okay, this is the rate. No, rate is inverse of time. So if you take the time more than 4.61 RC or five times constant, this is just an approximate number, four times or five times or 4.61 times RC, you start getting into zero and we get uh, uncorrelated samples. I mean, ideally uncorrelated, which is because they are Gaussian, we can say they are independent. Okay, now let's define the noise equivalent bandwidth. So I say the system because the system is uh, not ideal, it will have something of the sort of filtering. But sometimes we want to compare it with an ideal system. So let's get this equation here. A filter passes an amount of power that is proportional to a given bandwidth. But you know, because this filter is not flat, if you are here, you get more power. If you are here, you get less power. If it was an ideal low pass filter, if we are using an ideal low pass filter, then the gain h0 will lead the output. So the output would be n0 over 2 times 2b times h squared. So we get uh, we get the following output power. So how does we get that? How do we get this? This is the amplitude n0 over 2 times h squared, and the bandwidth is 2b. The two cancels with uh, n0 over 2. So this is the amount of power you get if we had an ideal low bus filter. If it's an unideal, of course, then you need to find the area. Uh, N naught would be the area of under this filter. And of course, would be if you if you assume that you have uh, uh, the filter here, S N will N naught over two is a constant, so it will be outside the integration. What we get is H F squared, and then we need to integrate. Now we don't want to deal with all these details, so. What we can do, of course, if, if the system is even, if it's a real system, it would be even. So instead of integrating from minus infinity to infinity, I'll just drop this two and say that the following integral is the area here. Now we would like to compare the ideal with an ideal. So we can define the noise equivalent bandwidth of the system to be, I will take this expression here, and I will equate it to the expression here. And I will find how much is this bandwidth of this filter, the ideal one, that would give me the same power as here. So solving for B, I got the following expression. So N0 cancels, and it's, it's it's comparing the area under the curve to the constant. So that's what does it, what does, what it uh, do, basically. So if I, if I give it a filter, I would say, what is the equivalent, what is the equivalent bandwidth that if I use with an ideal filter, that will give me the same output power? Okay, that's the meaning of noise equivalent bandwidth. So I can give you a filter and say, what is the noise equivalent bandwidth? So you need to go through this exercise. You need to find this bandwidth. Now, let me leave you with an exercise. And please, if you can do this exercise, then you, it, it, it shows how much you understand. We have a filter. And this filter is, an, is a, of course, theoretical. and uh, It's not uh, ideal, but it's, it's, it's not uh, practical. So it says it has a gain of 2 for this range, and it has a gain of 1 for that range. And the question is, find the noise equivalent bandwidth for the following filter. So you need to go to do this exercise. 
and get the output. I would like you also to find, to add to this, what would be the power of the output filtered noise if the input was white Gaussian noise with N naught over 2. Okay, so please share your answer in the comment section and we can cross-check our answers. The answer will not be given, but we can cross-check our answers. Thank you for being good listeners and see you in coming video.